Okay, 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 please don't turn off the video. Of course, I'm not gonna include Captain America, but I'm just trying to make a point that these films are, well, they're just, they're just that, they're films, okay? There's always a sense of make-believe with them, okay? That being said, as always, I like rules with these series, and what I'm looking to do is pick out the top five films for World War II that are pretty much as realistic and authentic as it can get. Okay, of course, I don't want you writing in an essay how the turn of the tide in World War II was the takedown of Red Skull or something like that. Now, as always, I'm going to list down below, like, if you are studying World War II, the best sort of YouTube channels for, like, history are going to be down below. I'm going to try and pick out those who do cover World War II as a topic. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get into the top five films um, for World War II if you are a student studying history or wherever you're studying. <laughs> How many? 300 of them. The tank's busted. We never run before, why are we gonna run now? I'm gonna hold this crossroad. What are you doing? It's my home. All right, so Fury, I think, was a, a brilliant, sort of nitty gritty, cold film. And what I loved most about it was the cast. I think it was actually really clever with the casting because we've got, you know, a cast of five mainly, four actors that we know, the seasoned actors, we know them heart by heart, we love them, and the main character we don't know. And I think that was to kind of represent that he is new to this um, to this tank crew. And that's the point as well. The tank crew is kind of new to us. You know, we've seen lots of war films. Um, but the tank, we, we, we see cat tanks in films, we know they're a big part of war, World War II particularly, but we never really see what life is like for um, a tank crewman, and I think Fury really picks up on that. So I think it's a great film to watch as a student, and um, just to get into that sort of tank world, which is obviously really big in, in World War II, especially um, German, the German tank, which I'm not going to remember now, I should have looked at my notes. Um, oh god, what was it called? But yeah, I think overall it's a great film, I think Brad Pitt played, uh, played it fantastically, Shia LaBeouf was brilliant as well um, and I think it's just as I said nitty gritty and if you really want to get into um, a World War II story and sort of the brutal realities of it and of, of tank grooming um, then I think that is um, a good film to get into. I can't stay here while all them go fight for me. Don't you figure this war is just going to fit in with your ideas? While everybody else is taking life I'm gonna be saving it. And that's gonna be my way to serve. Okay so um, if you're into films like me, now and again you'll come across a director that makes you sit up straight and pay attention and for example, Christopher Nolan, who has got a film in this list, is one of them. I hear his name and I'm instantly sold. Now, Mel Gibson is not a, it's not a person that I, I stand up right for. I didn't even know he directed films. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't mind him, but I'm just not big on him. But he did this film and directed it called Hacksaw Ridge. Um, and I wasn't quite sold on it, but then um, I heard it's about a, um, a story of a, of, a, of a real bloke who was, um, he, he went into war in World War II without carrying a rifle. He was a medic um, and he was actually against holding a weapon. And I thought, that's quite interesting. Then I heard, this has not given anything away, then I heard that he got the Medal of Honor. I'm like, brilliant. Wow, okay. Um, I'm kind of sold on it. Who plays the guy? And then it was Andrew Garfield. Um, Andrew Garfield, I've mentioned before in my top five films for economics. Um, he played a, um, a character in the film 99 Homes, which was very emotional. It was a very emotional film. And I was kind of hoping for something the same, and I wasn't disappointed. It's a brilliant film, Hacksaw Ridge. It really tugged at my heartstrings. I was like biting my nails for the guy. And it, I absolutely loved it. And it did that brilliant thing at the end where it kind of shows you the real life character. I think you should really watch it because it kind of gives you more insight into America's invasion of Japan, which I think kind of gets undersold. We mainly look at, you know, sort of storming the beach at Normandy and sort of taking over Germany. We don't really concentrate too much on Japan. And the only other film I know is Pearl Harbor, which is, I think is an honorable mentions. Anyway, let's get on to film number three. Why well, waste precious tanks when they can pick us off from the air like fish in a barrel? There are 400,000 men on this beach. Okay, so as I mentioned, Christopher Nolan directed this film. I'm just going to check. Yes, he did direct it. <laughs> just wanted to make sure I got my facts straight. I knew he directed it. It was a brilliant film. Um, I was almost put off for the fact that Harry Styles had a role in it. Um, honestly, don't let that put you off. He actually played it brilliantly. I actually forgot it was him. It has three separate storylines, but they're all on kind of different timelines. And they all happen at the same time, but different timelines. It's, it's crazy, but it's brilliant. It, it's, um, it's beautiful. It's cinematography. Cinematographically, I don't know what it is, but it's beautifully filmed. Um, I absolutely love the cinematography. Um, 
Tom Hardy's in it as well. You can't go wrong with Tom Hardy. <laughs> uh, I just I really love that guy. Uh, overall, it's a brilliant film of sort of Normandy and um, just the big, you know, um, not Normandy, what am I on about? Dunkirk. <laughs> Dunkirk and, you know, all, how the boats came from Britain to, to save them from the beaches of Dunkirk. And it's, it's, it's a brilliant film. It does, I think it's quite authentic for that part of history. And I also loved how it showed sort of the land, sea and air, which is a big part of World War II as well, the sort of, you know, it was a land, sea and air battle, especially for Britain. So I would encourage you to watch Dunkirk, if not for the World War II, for Christopher Nolan, because he is a genius at these kind of films. By order of the governor of the Warsaw district, there will be created a Jewish district in which all Jews will have to reside. You must get away at once. I'm not leaving. Can't I take my chances here? So I might do another video on like top five films of the Holocaust, but I did kind of want to get one in here as well because it's a important topic of World War II. Funny enough, as a separate note, I can't remember covering it much when I was in school. I kind of felt like it left it out and that's kind of an interesting point in itself. Should we be learning about the Holocaust in school? I don't know, maybe comment below about that. But anyway, The Pianists, um, it's not pronounced Pianist, I got corrected, Pianists. Uh, it's, it's, it's a brilliant story, a true story. Uh, now, interestingly, just I know Holocaust films can be hard to watch. You don't actually see concentration camps, not really anyway. This is more about Warsaw and the Warsaw Ghetto and just how, you, you know, if you know your history, you know that uh, you know, the Jews didn't just straight away get put into concentration camps. They, was sort of, they got degraded and they were just sort of lowered down in society, sort of one step at a time, you know, started with the stars, then they couldn't walk on the sidewalk, they couldn't hold jobs, they weren't allowed money, things like that. And that's kind of showed that um, that deterioration of the sort of the Jews in society. And it just kind of shows it through the eyes of one character, a really sweet character, really, um, a really a piano player. Um, and it's really heartbreaking, difficult to watch, but it's it's very authentic to the to the life of Jews from sort of day one of sort of you know Germany taking over Poland. So, you know, a lot of the time we just concentrate on concentration camps and what goes on in there, but this showed sort of uh, Warsaw, the, the ghetto and the life uh, that Jews were experiencing and because of that I think it's a great World War II film. I think it helps you really understand greater deal and uh, greater detail of what uh, what Jews are going through at that time. Anyway as I said I might do a, a separate one of the top five films of the Holocaust. I know they're not easy films to watch but let's get to um, number two. Sorry not number two, <laughs> actually we're on number one but before number one let's go through some honourable mentions. So Band the Brothers, we have to mention it. In fact, I kind of just wanted to make it a film in a way it is a film. No, it's, it's not, it's a mini series. Um, it's a brilliant series of um, soldiers in World War II. I am a power shoot regiment. Um, it's been a year since I've seen, I need to watch it again, but it's just brilliant. I don't really want to go into it. If you want some authentic World War II scenes, some World War II characters and real, real events, then give Band of Brothers a watch. I uh, highly recommend it. Along with, I hate to say this, Pearl Harbor. Uh, I mean, it's another film that covers sort of America versus Japan, but the only thing I kind of like about it is the, is the, so how Japan sort of attacks Pearl Harbor. I don't like, you know, it's just a brilliant, brilliant scene. Other than that, I found it a bit too cheesy, you know, and a kind of a classic America war love film. But yeah, it's still kind of an interesting watch. Of course, Saving Private Ryan. I might get some stick for not including Saving Private Ryan in, in my list of top five films. Just a hint there, it's not number one. It didn't even make it in the top five. Um, I love the beginning scene. I love when he stormed the beach in Normandy. Other than that, even though some people argue it is based on a true story, it's really not. I mean, there is some rumors of it, um, or there was uh, apparently an event where they did try and save a brother um, of deceased other brothers and return him home to his mother. I just, I just, I just thought the story kind of went against my rule about authenticity and realism. But the opening scene is still brilliant. The Imitation Game, it kind of shows the war on home soil. Um, it's about um, how we how, how the code breaker, um, I feel really bad, I forgot his name. What is his name? <laughs> Alan Turing, of course, the Turing machine. Um, you know, it's just how we broke the code, which really you know, turned the tide of the war. It's a brilliant film, especially if you want to know, because um, usually you, you learn about the important events of World War II. This was one of them, um, the code breaking machine. And definitely worth a watch, and it's got, um, why am I forgetting names? Cumberbatch in it, Benedict Cumberbatch in it, who played it brilliantly. And the last film to mention, again, this is the Holocaust film, but it's Slinder's List. Liam Neeson, uh, I won't say any more than that, just if you want a, a really good Holocaust film that maybe concentrates a little bit more on sort of the concentration camps on the, the real brutal side of the Holocaust, then maybe give that one a look. But let's get to, finally, my number one film. When will the lesson be learned? 
You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. Okay, so a little bit biased here because my so my favorite part of history is actually it's like it's it's in World War Two, but it's life in Britain during World War Two. I kind of like the politics. I kind of like the everyday life. I love like the posters, you know, um, loose lips sink ships, and the music as well. Uh, we'll meet again, and all oh, that about Britain. I just really loved. Um, so darkest hour. Brilliant, it's um, Gary Oldman in such a transformation, by the way, that by itself is worth watching. Uh, but I absolutely love the film, I love the politics of it, I love the character of Churchill, uh, I just love that sort of turn of the tide and sort of the politics first to then turn the tide of the war. And it's a brilliant film to try and understand um, again, the, the politics, which is really important in, in World War II, and the fact that at some stage we were thinking of sort of being allies with Hitler and just kind of letting him do what he wants. And I don't want to give away bits of the film, but I just thought it was really brilliant at capturing life in Britain at that point in history. I thought it was very authentic. Um, I think you might comment below that there was a couple of scenes that aren't authentic, for example, the subway scene um, on the London Underground, that apparently didn't happen, but it was still quite an emotional scene, I loved it. Um, so yeah, they're my top five films of sort of World War II history if you are a student. And remember, I've got some YouTubers down below if you are a student of history, they might be useful. Take these films with a pinch of salt, they're not 100% authentic, but I think that's actually what makes them brilliant to watch, because then you can sort of understand what is authentic, what is not. Just on the point of authenticity, if you think any of the films I've mentioned have a, are particularly bad at something, or, or like, if you think one of the films I've mentioned is like really missing, uh, is really misrepresenting a point of history. For example, one of the best examples I actually had is um, it was it was a history film. I can't remember which one, but in in the trivia on IMBD, which is a great place to look, uh, someone commented how on that particular day in history it was it was clear skies, it wasn't raining. However, the scene in the movie, it was raining. And they were like, how do you expect me to believe this film? <laughs> and um, if you find anything like that in these any of these films, comment down below, because I love um, just those arguments of authenticity and what actually was real history. I hope you like this series. The next video I'm doing, or one of them anyway, is gonna be World War One films. I've actually got enough films now to make it my top five. I wasn't happy with the list for a while, but now I am. So um, if you wanna see that, hit subscribe. It really helps the channel. Hit like, that helps it as well. And comment down below. I love your comments, but that's enough from me. I've talked enough. Uh, my name's Joshua. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.